I told you I don't need another stenographer. Oh, but you will soon, with business getting better and... Who says it is? Everybody says so, even the Republicans. No. Going down. Down, miss? No, not yet. is just as interesting as the front. Don't you think so? What is it you wanted? I'd like to see Mr. Burt. Mr. Burt is in Palm Beach. Oh, that's right. I forgot he wanted me to see Mr. Enright. Mr. Enright's in Spokane. Uh, and Mr. We... Carver never comes into the office on Tuesdays. And we're not taking on any more new girls, nor replacing the ones we have now. How unfortunate for the agency. Good evening. Thanks. Yes? Yes, sir. You got any lyrics to fit it? Yeah. Listen to this. Buy your socks, sees where the gang goes, where they sell, pluck my tangos. How's that? Oh. Well, if you'd write a good tune... Yes, and you'd still write punk lyrics. Pardon me. Hello. Hello, well, on. I'd like a job. With a paycheck attached, please. Sorry, sister, we're fresh out. Now listen to this tune again, will well, you, Well, I thought... All piped down. I only want to... Quiet. Do... Won't you sit down? Yeah, and relax. Oh, thank you. Don't pay any attention to him. Uh, you said you wanted a job. Yes. Well, we just laid off two secretaries. I suppose you are a secretary. Yes, but I scrub floors, too, and I really do need a job. Now tell us about the poor, starving mother and the four little bebes. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I happen to be an orphan. Well, I wish I could help you, sister, but these would be pretty hard times. Why don't you see one of the partners? Well, I can't afford long-distance calls, and Mr. Carver never comes in on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, had any experience in advertising? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah? Well, I, I read a lot of advertisements. Look, honey, why don't you find yourself a nice five and ten cent store, go inside and pull one of those counters right around in front of you? Maybe you think I haven't tried that. You've been to the agencies? If you can think of one decent thing I haven't tried, I'll give you a prize. Prize. Prize, that's the word. Prize, spies, eyes, surprise. Did you ever hear a Kluckmeyer, Kluckmeyer's hosiery? Well, I suppose... Have I... you got any of the music? Well, Neither I... has Kluckmeyer. Now listen to this theme song for his new radio hour. Just as smart as a Spanish fandango. Work of art, that's the Kluckmeyer tango. That's his new brand of stocking. Their beauty will surprise your eyes, get it? And you'll find they are a prize. For I'm speaking of Kluckmeyer's tangos. Well, how do you like that? Well, I, I think it's... Putrid. Well, then it's sure to score with Clucky. Say, Tony, it's four or six. Uh, well, I better step on it. Uh, sorry, we couldn't get you a job. Oh, that's all right. Uh, could I loan you a five spot? Or buy a meal? No, thank you. Uh, so long. Good night. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, Oliver. So long. Well, good night. Good night. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute here. Hey, you're stacked up pretty nice. I'm um, what? I mean, you got uh, swell pins, limbs, legs. Good night. Well, I don't get sore. I just had an idea. 
Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm going to get you a job yet. Come here. Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Yes, yes. Let, let go of me, please. Uh, quiet, will you? Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Hello. Uh, uh, oh. Um, uh, what do you want? I want you to meet a friend of mine. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> I'm very pleased to meet Say, you. Have you made those so, pictures for the Tango campaign yet? I just, uh, just got started, yes. See? I worked pretty hard on those. Do you like it? You don't think a thing like that's going to make people tango conscious, do you? You don't call that advertising. Oscar, it's about time somebody taught you the ABCs. Here, go on, put those on. Now, you wreck Oh, it. pipe down. Go on back in there and put them on. Hurry up, go on, hurry up. Now, Oscar, the ABC of advertising is attraction, beauty, and charm. Do you get it? I worked two hours to arrange those. Two hours for what? Can you imagine anybody getting excited over a thing like this? Now, why do women buy silk stockings? Why? To, uh... You're right. To show off. And to show off to who? Well, I guess... You're that... right again. To men. And what man wants to look at an empty silk stocking? Oh, but I... You guessed it! No man! You got those things on? Yes, I well, have. Well, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, let's get going. Get over on this thing now. Stand up on there. Here, Oscar, play with this. Play with... Here, now, put this shawl around you. Play it around, you know. Play it around so you get that uh, Spanish there. That's the idea. Now we're getting somebody. Wait, we'll undo this thing here. Just a minute. Oh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> no offense. My goodness, have you gone crazy? All you have to do is be still, look, and learn. I'm teaching you the elements of advertising. Now, let's see. Put this thing around you here. Right into the... Oh, this thing over there. 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 Hey, put your hand up there. Hold that. Come on. Hold that. That's the idea. Now, now raise your skirt up. Raise it up. A little higher. A little bit higher. That's it. Now we're... Please, not on my... Oscar, don't get up and come here and treat your eyes to a feast that'll make them just cry for tango hosiery. There it is, the ABCs. Attraction, beauty, and charm. <clears throat> Why, that's beautiful. That's perfectly... It is. Tomorrow I'm going to get her a real costume. I'm going to light her as she should be lighted. And then, oh. and then, but in the meantime, will you put her under a salary as a regular model? Salary? Uh, <clears throat> you bet you my life. Yo, yo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a real salary. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, skip it. Say, I've just got time to drop you off at your home on my way to rehearsal. Rehearsal? Sure, my orchestra rehearsal. I just have this job here as a meal ticket. As soon as I get my pan in shape, I'll be in the real money. Come on, I gotta get going. Oh, and listen, when you come to work tomorrow, be sure and ask for me. Okay, say, say, what's your name? Oh, pardon me. Mr. Oliver Houston. Charmed, I'm sure. Mr. Houston, I'd like you to know Miss Treasure McGuire. Treasure? Did you say treasure, treasure? <laughs> but don't blame me for it. The orphanage matron got poetic. <laughs> <laughs> treasure. Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure McGuire. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Oh, hi, Treasure. I've been waiting for you. Square me with Betty, will you? Well, what's wrong now? Oh, I don't know. She ain't speaking to me again. All right, come on. Hiya, Betty. I'm sorry late. Well, you missed a swell supper, but I saved you some anyway. That's good. Oh! Looks like bad luck followed you in. Come on out, sugar, can't you? I told you to beat it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What brought this war on? Oh, he's been at it again. At what, ducky? You shut up. He's been asking me to marry him. That's all he can say, and it's getting on my nerves. If he opens his yak to sneeze, I say no from force to habit. Oh, well, I didn't mean it exactly. Oh, so you've been giving me the runaround, huh? No, not that, sugar. I just sort of knew you wouldn't say yes. Oh, you gear bust the back. Oh, you can back in your corners. This is no time to fight. We're going to celebrate. Celebrate what? Have they passed a law against dumbbells? We're going to celebrate my going to work. 
Frazier, did you find a job? Oh, a tip of a job. Oh, well, right. now we can go. Say it, and I'll stop you. Oh, well, I was going to say, was it now we could go to the movies? Sure, the movies. That is, if uh, you two can sit in the dark without cutting each other's throats. There's a swell movie at the Little Grand. Oh, swell my neck. A lot of sloppy love stuff. Oh, love's a wonderful thing, honey lamb. We'll go see the new Frank Buck picture. I understand he brought all of your relatives alive. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Hold it. Hold it, girl. That's fine. There we are. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> There. Now, just one more, and then we'll... Uh, excuse me, girls. Excuse me. <clears throat> Hello. <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, he's here. Yes, yes, right away. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> oh, uh, Miss McGuire, Mr. Uh, Foster Carver wants to see you in his office right away. What for? Uh, well, I don't know. He didn't say. <clears throat> I could guess. <clears throat> uh, jealous? Never you mind. He'll be calling me again some of these days. Uh, yes. <clears throat> yes, of course. You can send me the usual form letters. Now, in regards to... I'm Miss McGuire. Oh, yes. Please sit down. That'll be all, Miss Lewis. After finding these photographs on my desk, Miss McGuire, I've been terribly curious about you, your background, environment, I filled out a personnel card. Yes, I know. Age 19, white, unmarried, some secretarial training, no previous experience. That's all superficial. Now, what about you? You've never worked before? Yes, I, I have, but... Uh, yes? But just at sort of fill-in jobs, to pay my way through secretarial school. And what sort of jobs are fill-in jobs? Well, I, I was a waitress and a manicurist, a taxi dancer, and I was a solo dancer, too, and... and once I worked in a window. <laughs> in a window? Demonstrating a reducing machine, but I, I started to put on weight and they, they fired me. <laughs> Do you prefer being a model to a secretary? Well, there's, there's not much future to posing for photographs. <laughs> Smart girl. Sometimes I use an extra secretary. If you want, I'll slide you gently away from Oscar and into this branch of the work. You'll have a chance to learn the business. Oh, I'd appreciate that. That's all right. And let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Thank you. Get me Oscar. Hello, Oscar. I've just been talking to Miss McGuire. And I think we might be able to use her as a model in that jewelry account. Yes. I want you to photograph her in a gown that I'll get for you. It may be late this afternoon, but I want you to wait till it arrives. You understand? There. There, that's wonderful, dear. That's... There, the whole bad horse. Oh. The one thing I hate about this business is we work all day and just when we finish, why we start to work again. <clears throat> now just hold it. Just hold that, dear. Hold it. That's very good. Very good indeed. There. There. There we are. <coughs> now, <coughs> just one more plate and then we go home. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I... Oh, Miss McGuire. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Carver? Do you mind working over time tonight? Oh. Why, no. My regular secretary's gone home, and something of an emergency has arisen. Hmm. I'll have to phone my roommate. She's expecting me. Well, of course. I'd, um, I'd be glad to stay if you want me to. I won't need you, Oscar. Thank you. Do you mind sending word up to Betty that I shan't be home for dinner? I'm working overtime tonight. Thank you. Oh, if you'll wait just a minute, I'll get into my other clothes. That dress will do perfectly. This dress? You're going to help me entertain an advertising manager. Oh, but I thought you were. You see, usually I take my own secretary, but she's gone home. And if you can stand dining and dancing with me, we may be able to bring a real car into our firm. Well, of course I'll be glad to try. I need you, really. And when Colin sees you in that dress, he'll be too entranced to know what he's signing. Oh, I hope so. I'll try to help. We'll have to hurry, or they'll be there ahead of us. Hungry? 
Starved. Have a cocktail? No, thanks. I'll just concentrate on crackers. I can't understand why they're late. Collins at 8 o'clock sharp. Does he know you have a private dining room? No, we always have one. Couldn't hear ourselves thinking that racket downstairs. Yes? I have a message for you, Mr. Carver. Well, Mr. Johnson just... You mean me. Collins, don't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Collins regrets that he cannot keep his appointment. Mm hmm. How unfortunate. Shall I serve now, sir? Yes, please do. Well, it seems as if our business meeting has turned into a party for two, doesn't it? Perhaps you'd better take me... Not in your present starving condition. I'd much rather... I refuse to let Collins spoil an entire evening for me. You mean that Johnson... <laughs> John... Oh, yes. Stupid way to... You know, I think I'll take that cocktail after all. Fine! Well, you can serve at those two places. Johnson. I beg your pardon. You idiot. Taxi lady? No. Hey! Oliver! Oh, you angel! Angel nothing. I distinctly heard feathers rustling. What you heard were Tilly's bearings knocking. Come on, get in here, you little fathead. I must be in my second childhood. Playing Boy Scout to a dame dumb enough to fall for one of Carver's business meetings. I suppose that was the gang. It was. How did you know? I know him. Do you always appear at the crucial moment? Well, I tried to follow you, but Tilly couldn't keep up with the cyclone that guy drives. I've been to every roadhouse on this highway looking for his car. Thanks. Oh, yeah. But if you will stop at the first restaurant, I'll buy the hamburgers. Lady, my middle name is Wimpy. Give her time now. Little, uh, oh, Wimpy. Give her time. Miss McGuire hasn't come in yet. When she does, have a report to me. Yes, sir. Hello! Shh. What's up? Shh, please. Oh, we're gonna hide, quick. Uh, hide? Uh, under the desk. How's that cuppy coming, Tony? Uh, it's not quite ready yet, Forster. Uh -huh. Okay. You can come out now. Now, would you mind telling me what this is all about? I'm just trying to dodge old help with the helpless till noon. Thank heaven this thing. Well, you must be in Foster. Yeah, old Bright Ideas himself. Kind of got in for him, haven't you? Did he ever try to create a future for you? Oh, he isn't such a bad egg. Neither was Bluebeard. Uh oh. What's your name? Treasure McGuire. Treasure McGuire. Start laughing. <laughs> Laugh. I think it's a grand name. You know, I set up half a last night just looking at your pictures. What? Uh, I mean, and writing copy that goes with it. Look, I'll show you. It's a little of a layout. Say, this is nice. Would you have lunch with me? For what good reason? Oh, just to prove to you that all we carvers aren't bluebeards. All we carvers? You mean... You mean you and the... Uh, yes, I'm Tony Carver. He's my brother. Great galloping uh. mackerel. But you will have lunch with me, won't you? Please. Well, Miss McGuire, Mr. Foster Carver is waiting to see you at once. I thought I could help you. Thought you were a smart girl. But I see I'm wrong on both counts. And so, Miss McGuire, I'm greatly afraid that the company will have to continue without the benefit of your services. That is, unless you change your viewpoint. I'm afraid, Mr. Carver, I'm too intelligent to be smart. 
Well, in that case, you can get your closing check for my secretary. I tell you, I cannot read. It's too important. I must see him right away. <laughs> you, you are the one. I know you. Please don't go away. Stay here. Oh, you are so beautiful. I tell you, it is great. It's grand. It's marvelous. It's colossal. Congratulations, young man. I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I bubble my I snubble my I should as well as my tongue. I, I double my budget. Everything. Newspapers, magazines, billboards. But, 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 I, I understand. Uh, what's so uh, tremendous? You you don't what is so tremendous? This girl <laughs> that photograph that photograph this girl I tell you all the other ideas they are no good at all. I base my whole campaign on this girl. This girl. She's my girl now. The tango girl. She is the what you make of what you make of it. She is the, my trademark. Would you like to be my trademark? Yes? No? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. That is wonderful from you. I tell you what you will do. You will make me a lot of photographs of her. All poses. Hundreds of them. Right, right away. Yes. yes. Uh, my idea exactly. Sure. And Mr. McGuire, you may report to Oscar at once for the photographs Mr. Cluckmire desires. And, uh, and forget our recent conversation. Certainly, Mr. Carver. Well, sit down, Mr. Cluckmire. We'll talk this thing over. But I tell you, I have never seen anything like it. You shouldn't take Foster so seriously. Personally, I think it's a little bit cracked. Cracked? Yes. Here's your pie, miss. Oh, thank you. He wants to be high society. Put on the dog. One of these socially prominent carvers, just like Mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he never takes any interest in the advertising racket. Puts in a day or so a week, fiddles about and calls that working. Uh -huh. But I take after Dad, I guess. I want to do it right. Learn all I can about it. Make it a man-sized job. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to start Another my... Another cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, uh, want your check now? Uh, yes, please. I'm going to start my own... Uh, both on one? If you please. Can't we go someplace where I can talk to you? You have the afternoon off, haven't you? Well, yeah. We'll find some little place in the country. Say, I know a swell spot. It's right on the other side oh, of... Oh, that's fine. Thank you very much. Well, wait just a minute. Here's your check. Thank you. I'm tired of taking orders from foster mother. I want to stand on my own feet. I can understand that. Can you really? Sure. Uh, share a secret? I'd love to. Well, I'm going to have my own advertising agency. When? When I'm 21. That's when I get my inheritance. The money Dad left me. Subject to mother's okay. And then... And then what? I think I can tell you more about that later. Oh. Rain. I felt a drop on my face. Rain? Uh, you know that wet stuff. Uh, yes. So I... I uh, but we'll get soaked. That's right. Uh, I'll race you to the car. All right. <laughs> well, if it isn't Grandma. Hello, Mary Sunshine. What happened to you? Joe, he took me to the taxi driver's picnic. Where'd they have it? In the North River? <laughs> well, it rained. Maybe you noticed that. Yeah, I noticed it. Well, when the first five drops fell, those meter maniacs grabbed their taxis and tore for town. You sit tight, lovey duck, Joe says to me, and wait here. And I'll make enough money and tips to buy you an engagement ring. And I haven't seen him since. You came home in a richy enough car. Uh, uh, who's the fella? He's Tony Carver, of the Carvers. <gasps> the ones you read about on the society page? Yeah, but, but he's not like the rest. He's, well, he's different. Oh. Thank you, Wilson. That will be all.
I think you are taking Tony's little affair with the Maguire girl too seriously, Foster. After all, he's young. Yes, young and susceptible enough to drag our name into a scandal. Well, that's possible, of course. In view of the fact that he's been seeing her almost every night for the past several weeks, I'd call it probable. I refuse to worry about it too much. After all, you've had your moments. Yes, but I never showed symptoms of marrying them. Now you are being ridiculous. Tony couldn't be such an utter fool. No, I think not. Uh, Tony, will you come in a minute, please? What is it, Forster? I'm a bit late now. You're going out with Miss McGuire tonight? Uh, yes, sir. How did you know that? We were expected at the Norton's. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. You've been slumming a lot lately, haven't you? Slumming? Why, you... Anthony, please. I'm sorry, Tony. I thought you knew what you were doing. Good night, Mother. Now, have I proved my point? A bit crudely. But you see now. Tony's a silly little idiot. We'll have to look after him. As you know, Miss McGuire, my brother is young and inexperienced. He doesn't fully realize that there are definitely prescribed limits to, uh, shall we say, uh, casual infatuations. Fortunately, your posing for the tango advertisements is completed. And I, uh, I think that you understand. I understand. I believe this will more than tide you over until you find another position. I have twenty dollars in salary coming to me. That's all I want. In other words, you intend to continue seeing my brother? That's up to Tony, isn't it? Very well. Hey, Duchess. Since when are you going to lunch at ten o'clock? Well, from now on, you can be the tango girl. I've just retired. Retired? Why? Shh, not so loud. I'd rather Tony didn't hear. Foster, eh? Parental pride to the fore. Never shall the fair name of Carver be sullied, soiled, and stuffed. <laughs> you should wear a turban and carry a crystal. <laughs> I don't need to, lady. I've been expecting this for a week or so. Well, goodbye. And good luck. Oh, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting so amps in mind. You know what I just did? I shook hands with the time clock and punched the boss. <laughs> you idiot. And just because oh, I... I was going to quit anyhow. Me and the band are starting a regular job next week. That's well. Say, why don't you come along with us? You used to sort of dance them up. Oh, yes, but don't worry about me. I'll get along. <laughs> but if you don't... If I don't, I'll remember. That's a bet. Going down. Yell down. Any luck today? Eight more firms promise to keep my name on file in the wastebasket. Well, I asked my uncle to give you a job in his meat market, but I guess it didn't work out. Well, thanks anyway. You know what Betty and I can't understand is how you got canned so sudden like. Betty thinks it was that dude with the hot shot car. Oh, it wasn't at all. Well, Betty thinks it was. Anyway, she said she's tired of telling you're not in. You'll get discouraged pretty soon. Uh, I'd be glad to book him on the stoop for you. Oh, no, thanks, Joe. Oh, no trouble at all. Say, listen, Treasure. Why don't you let me give you a knock down to this Jerry Moriarty? Who's Jerry Moriarty? Oh, you know, the guy I was telling you about. The mechanic that works down the garage. Why, all the dames are crazy about him. Ah, and he's got muscles like a Jim Wanders. Well, you ought to see him lift up a cylinder head with just one duke. Uh, no, thanks, Joe. I'd rather go to the movies. Well, are you, are you coming in? No, I'm just leaving. I've got to take the cab back. But I'll be back later. <laughs> I'm going to ask her again tonight. I wish you luck, Joe. Well, I think she's coming around to my way of saying yes. Because the uh, last five times I asked her, she didn't even suck me. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure. Treasure. 
Where have you been? Why have you been avoiding me? What have I done? Why, nothing. I, I've just been busy. You can't treat me this way. I won't let you. I've got to talk to you. Oh, but, Tony, not now. I've got to go upstairs. Come sit in the car, please, just for a moment. Now, tell me, why did you quit your job? Why did you leave without telling me? I almost went crazy just wondering. Don't you know that? How I... about it, Treasure? You want me to paste this dude in the snoop? Oh, no, no. Everything's all right. Oh, just say the word. It'll be a pleasure. Oh, Tony, I, I want you to know Mr. Sloan. How do you do? Listen, wise guy, I'm going to give you an earful. Oh, Joe, please. Can't we go someplace where we'll be alone? Look all at right. Treasure. Uh, tell Betty I may be late for dinner. Well, I don't understand you, girls. I'm going to do a friendly thing to dinner. Maybe we'll have a little privacy here. Now tell me why. Why what? Why everything? Well, I, I found a chance for a better job, and so I quit. I don't believe you. You don't have to. Why have you been evading me? But I haven't evaded you. I've, I've just been out when you called, that's all. Well, if I make dates in advance, will you keep them? Well, I'm afraid my fiancé would be jealous. Your fiancé? Oh, who is he? Well, his name's, uh, his name's uh, Moriarty. Jerry Moriarty. He's a mechanic. And he's terribly jealous. So it was Foster that made you leave? Well, it wasn't at all. That's ridiculous. You're a terrible liar, Treasure. Oh, Tony, don't you see that it would never work out? Don't you see that they're right? Foster, your mother, and everybody? But you do love me, don't you? No, I don't. And even if I did, it wouldn't change matters any. Now that you've said everything you were told to say, why don't you say what you really mean? But I do mean it. That's sensible. Oh, Tony, please take me home. I'll take you home. I'll take you to our home. We'll be married, Treasure. Married right away this afternoon. Oh, but your inheritance. Oh, hang the inheritance. No, wait a minute. I need that. I want it for you. To give you the things you've never had. Furs, clothes, servants, and a fine home. Oh, Tony, don't be silly. I've got it. We'll be married secretly. Across the state line. When I'm 21, we'll tell the family. They can't do anything about it then. Oh, but what if they... Oh, will you? Did you say yes? And so, by the authority vested in me as a minister of God and by the laws of the state, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessing upon these two who have come together and made their vows before thee. Aid them by thy wisdom and love to maintain the union they have established. Guide them and keep them forever. Amen. Now, this is just the apartment you're looking for, I'm sure. Gosh, it's small. Oh, it's cute. You couldn't even swing a cat in it. Who wants to swing a cat? Well, you couldn't even swing a kitten. Now, you just step this way. Isn't this a cozy little kitchen? What does it look like when you unfold it? Oh, uh -huh. hush. Don't pay any attention to him. He was brought up in the Grand Central Station. Oh, a railroad man. Henry, he's my husband. He used to be a conductor on the Great Northern. Oh, Tony, look here. Isn't this perfect, this swazzly little glass? Swazzly? What does that mean? Oh, I don't know, but isn't it? It is. But if you come with me, I'll show you the bedroom and the bath. It has a lovely shower. Don't you think we'd better be running along, honey? Don't you like this? I wouldn't pen my wife up in a converted clothes closet. Oh, Tony, you goose. This is the most perfect place I could hope for. Do you really like it? Oh, it's heavenly, divine, magnificent, gorgeous. And swazzly? Absolutely swazzly. Okay, we'll take it. Tony! Oh, don't you want to... Oh, pardon me. But don't you want to see the other rooms? Uh, how much is this apartment? 
Well, if you'd move in right away, I could let you have it for fifty dollars a month. Okay. But you haven't seen the other rooms. Here you are. All right, I'll make you out a receipt when we get downstairs to my office. And uh, when would you like to move in? Oh, we're in. Now? Without any baggage? Hmm. I don't know that well, I can allow a marriage certificate if you'd like to see that. <laughs> oh, newlyweds. <laughs> well, not exactly. We've been married for two hours. Well, well, well. I can remember my own wedding day. It was a raining cats and dogs. And Henry, he's my husband, he said to me, well, he said... very anxious to have a receipt. Uh, all right, I'll make it out as soon as I get downstairs. And Henry, he That's said to me, he said, Maisie, uh, well, 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 would you mind making out a receipt? <laughs> All right, I'll make it out right away. And to what name shall I make it out? Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony... McGuire. McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> well, for Pete's sake, she's crying. Oh, she's a dear. I could rip off a crier to myself. Why, Treasure, what have I done? You... <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, Tony, you've made me awfully happy. Oh. <laughs> Honest, look. <laughs> but remember, not a word of this to anyone. So help me, unless you go ripsy on me. Oh, as if I would. Oh, well, not that I'd blame you, because it's not McCarr's for Mrs. Anthony Thorne Carver of the Carver's to pal around with the wife of a taxi pirate. <laughs> the wife of... Betty, you haven't... Mm-hmm. I slipped up and said yes to the big lug. <laughs> oh, Betty! Oh, but I haven't married him yet. I may get my brains back. <laughs> oh. I thought we'd better lay our plan before we found out that we knew. There's no doubt that it was, Tony. None. Poor fools had the marriage license made out in their real names. Is there any possibility of bringing the girl here, educate her, dress her, make her presentable? Never. But a girl was raised in an orphanage. Told me that she'd been a manicurist, a dancer, and... I don't know what else. Besides, how could we ever buy this to our friends? Of course we can have the marriage in Earl. Tony won't be of age till June. Yes, we'll have to do that for Tony's sake. Yes, we'll have to. I'll phone the attorney. Now, wait a minute. There's more to it than that. More? If we simply have the marriage in Earl, he'll remarry her the day he's 21. But I... So it's up to us to disillusion him. And make him see the girl as she really is. There's the way we wash our dishes, wash our dishes, wash our dishes. There's the way we wash our dishes. Next. Oh, Fooey. Soap suds. What'd you expect? Peppermint? You know, as a rank amateur at this dish drying racket, I think I'm pretty super superb. Your talent simply astounds me. Mm. Oh, I'll do that. Well, my cook is the prettiest, loveliest, sweetest little wife in all the world. With the craziest, homeliest, silliest husband. She loves me. Now put me down. Okay. Oh, well, you brute, you <laughs> beast, you villain. Oh, darling. <laughs> oh, honey, it's wonderful, isn't it? Much too wonderful. But suppose your family finds out, then... There isn't a ghost of a ghost of a spook of a chance. Mm -hmm. But suppose that... But if they did, they take one look at you and get three loud cheers. Oh, honey. Bet you. <laughs> Bet you my life. But they're really awfully nice underneath. Mother and Forster. Oh, I'm sure they are. Mm. Well, did you get the keys? Yes, I've done, sir. Mr. Tony was sleeping soundly. I found those on his dresser. Good. And door key, garage, car. Nice one. For his locker at the club, sir. Oh. This? I've never seen that one before, sir. Elston Apartments. Elston Apartments. What? No, there's no Mr. and Mrs. Carver here. No, the only new tenants are a Mr. and Mrs. McGuire. Thank you. We'll find a key maker and have this key duplicated. 
At this time of night, sir? Get him out of bed. Pay him what he asks. And have the duplicate stamped the same as this. Elston Apartments, 422. Understand? Yes, sir. And then put these keys back before my brother awakes. Very good, sir. Now you cover the codfish with cold water. Not so fast. Add the minced onions, drain it, add to the white sauce. May I come in? Why, uh, of course. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I want you to know that I came here only at my mother's request. Then, uh, then she knows. Yes, and I'm sorry to say that she insists upon an annulment. Oh, no. I've tried to dissuade her. I'd honestly like to see you and Tony make a go of it. But her mind's made up. I see. I know what you must think of me, and I don't blame you. I'm rather fond of Tony in my own way, and for his sake, I'd like to help him. Help him? But... but how? By suggesting that you do not contest the annulment. And then I may be able to help with Mother later. Oh, but... But I had intention of contesting. You're all right. I guess that's all. Except to thank you for making a very unpleasant duty tolerable. And I wish you good luck. Thank you. Well, may I ask you a favor? Would you mind not letting Tony know I was here? I'd rather they didn't know. I understand. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. There. <laughs> there. Is that the right pose? You'll do. Oh, you All darling. Right, you stay put while I get dinner. Was Betty here today? Oh, oh, no, no visitors. Hello. What's this? What's what? This, look. What, isn't that attractive? Where'd it come from? I found an easy chair. Oh, it was bit me. Must be left there by the nice tenants. Very nice, too. Come on, honey, hurry with the dinner. Hungry? Mm-hmm. The sooner we get over with, the more time I'll have to tell you how much I love you. Oh, do you have to leave early again? I'm afraid so. I don't want the family to get suspicious. Oh, do you... do you think they might be? Not as far as I know. But some super reporter in that hick town found our names on that marriage license register and called me at the office today. Oh. Tony, you've got to promise me something. Anything your heart desires. Promise me. That no matter what happens, you'll come to me on your 21st birthday. I promise you, Treasure, no matter what happens, I'll come to you when I'm 21. Look. On June the 3rd. See? Oh, my darling. Hello, Tony. Hello. Did Mother speak to you? Yes, she did. I know it seems awfully unfair, old man, but it's the right thing to do. I was thinking it might be best if you were transferred to the London branch of the agency. Just till things blow over. I'm staying here. Okay, kid. Just trying to make things easier. So where'd you find my case? Your case? Yes, I've been looking everywhere for it. Are you certain that's yours? Well, of course. Where'd you find it? Why, well, I found that case in my wife's apartment. And you... Of course it couldn't be mine. It must be a similar one. How did that case get in my wife's apartment? Well, uh... Do you want the truth? I do. Okay, kid. You asked for it. Come with me. Hey, 
Here you are. Well, what was this for? I don't understand. Well, compare it with your key to her apartment. Oh. You see, Tony, I knew you were mistaken. I'll leave for London in the morning. Yes, miss. For London. The day before yesterday. No, miss. He left no messages. That girl again? Yes, sir. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. Well, what happened? Well, the attorneys have arranged everything. It'll all be done very quietly. I've been thinking, Foster. Suppose the girl writes to Tony. Oh, she will. But her letters will be forwarded to me. Tony will never see them. But if he doesn't answer her? Oh, he will. Keep her suspicions lulled until we've got Tony married to some eligible girl. For the 16th time, Treasure, won't you pull out of that boarding house and move in with Joe and me? No. For well, why? Two reasons. Newlyweds shouldn't have chaperones. Oh. And I'd only have to leave when Tony comes back. When did you hear from him last? Mm, we go. Did he send you any money? Well, you know, his folks don't allow him very much. Oh, he didn't, huh? Treasure, you've waited almost a year. You know you're an awful sap to... Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, but... I... Look, honey, I have to run along now. Oh. Job hunting again, huh? Yeah, but I got a real lead this time. A lead? Yes, I learned yesterday that an old friend of mine's back in town. Oh, here. Run along. I'll take care of it. I'm glad to see you, funny face. Oh, I'm glad to see you, too, Arthur. Oh, sit down here. How long has it been? A year? Almost. Well, I tried to get you a half a dozen times. Did you? Yeah, and I, uh, say, I, uh, I heard about your annulment, and I want you to know that I'm sorry. You needn't be. Can you keep the secret? With both hands. Tony's coming back next month, and we're going to be married again. Really? Oh, that's grand. Yeah, but in the meantime, little funny face needs a job. A job? Well, doesn't Tony Oh, he send... sends me money whenever he can, but his folks don't allow him very much. Oh, huh. Yeah. Well, I'm going to need a job myself after Saturday. This joint's closing. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's a rotten shame. This is a good spot, too. With the right management, it'll be a gold mine. Wish I had the money to take it over. Oh, well. Why don't you pose for those tango ads again? <laughs> I'm about as popular with that agency as a canceled account. Well, skip the agency. Go to Cluckmire himself. Now, that's not a bad idea. You're telling me? <laughs> Listen, I'll drive you down to Clucky's office. Maybe he needs a new theme song for his radio dribble. Come on. Okay. If we talk fast enough, we can talk the guy into anything. Two thousand pairs of these stockings we sent him, and now he only wants one thousand pairs. Last week, he sent Tall Fox Incorporated all Daisy Down Street. And now he wants peach flushes. Is this a madhouse or ain't it a lunatic asylum? Which, which is it? Hmm? You don't know. She don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Get out. Get out of oh, my office. Will you please get out, you unsatisfactory help? What do you want? Look, Meyer speaks. Ah, hello, Hans. Think, how are you, Hans? Ah, sure, everything is wonderful, Hans. It couldn't be any better. Business is terrific. Sure, <laughs> Hans, you know I like you, Hans. Goodbye. Herr Plattenkanzler, Hans. Hello, Mr. Kluckmeier. Get out from my office. Who let you in? What do you want? 
Don't you know me? I don't know nobody. Why should I? Now look at here, Mr. Cluckmeyer. Don't you remember her? I never saw that face before. Mr. Cluckmeyer. <coughs> oh, my little Miss Trademarker. My tango girl. Come, please sit down. Make yourself at home. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what can I do for us? Well, uh, we want a job. You want a job? So you have one. You are my tango girl. You will have some more pictures taken. That's very easy. I will call up the agency. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a better idea. But my dear Miss Straightmarker, from such a pretty uh, face, I don't want to hear ideas. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Clarkmeyer. It's colossal. Huh? Suppose I told you how to get a new radio program, a new way of advertising Tango Hose, and make a whole lot of money besides. What would you say to that? <laughs> I, I would say it in a language which you don't speak. I wouldn't be able to find the words in American. <laughs> you and Oliver and I are going to open a nightclub. A nightclub? I should be selling stockings with a club? Yes, the club Tango with its own broadcast. And the original tango girl in person. And maybe, probably, perhaps the Philly Harmonica Orchestra, too. Huh? Now listen to me. Uh -huh. I really have a very good idea. Hello, Mr. Clarkmeyer. Hello, Mr. Clarkmeyer. Gentlemen, at this time it gives me great pleasure to introduce our featured attraction, the original Cluckmeyer Tango Hosiery Girl, Miss Treasure McGuire, and her partner, Mr. Barlow.
10, 20, 30, 35. That's 35. That makes exactly two thousand four hundred and fifty two dollars and eighty seven cents. Not bad at all. Bad, bad. <laughs> all these years I have been stockings making. It's night clubs I should have on. <laughs> Don't forget this was the opening night. We might not do so well later on. Is that so? Well, I have a proposition to you. I buy out your shares in this club and put you both on that contract to me. I'll take my chance in a partnership. <laughs> And I'm quitting on the 2nd of June. Quitting? Why, you shouldn't even say such a word, not even in fun. Oh, but I mean it, Mr. Klossmeyer. I'm getting married. Don't you do it. Follow my advice. Don't do it now. Listen to me. Now look, Mr. Klossmeyer. She's all tired out. I'm going to take her home. All right, take her home. But remember, do not get married. Good night, Mr. Klossmeyer. Good night, my sister's kin. Schlaf wohl. Here you are, Missy. Yes, sir. Say, you better say goodbye to Tilly. I'm taking her to pasture tomorrow. Goodbye, Tilly. Maybe you'd like to come with me tomorrow and help me pick out Tilly's successor. Oh, no, thanks. I have a heavy day ahead of me. I'm going to re-rent the apartment Tony and I had. Oh, I see. Say, treasure. Yes? Yeah. I, uh, I suppose I'm talking out of turn, but... But what? Well, aren't you counting an awful lot on Tony's coming back? Oh, I know he'll be here. Yeah, but well, I suppose something should happen. Nothing will. Okay. I just wonder, keep you from getting too hopped up. <laughs> good old Oliver. <laughs> yeah, good old Oliver, right in the class with good old Tilly. Good evening, Miss McGuire. Oh, good evening. I was waiting up for you, and when I heard you out here, I thought, well, you'd lost your key, like as not. No. You want to take him up to your room now? Yes. Oh, well, you see, I was just about to go. Oh, she, she doesn't mean you, you goose. Well, then who? Uh, here he is, Miss McGuire. <laughs> oh. I got his little head up. <laughs> this is the hymn, Oliver. Him, uh, yours? Tony's in mine. Oh. Oh. Look at the little monkey, shake hands with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no wonder you're so sure Tony's coming back. Oh, but Tony doesn't know about the baby. Oh, he doesn't? I didn't want to worry him at first, and now I, I want to surprise him. I see. Well, um, <laughs> well, good night. Oh, good night, Oliver. Know what that means? Uh, that's right. Your daddy's coming home today. Bye. 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 Yes, sir. It kind of makes me feel like that, too. the way we feel it ought to be in the headlines mm -hmm. new drive on reckless voters elections show return to bases of two parties dizzy dean pitches one hit game <laughs> you'll be more interested in that later mm -hmm. mrs cartwright palmer to be hostess for the friday morning club isn't that just dandy Mrs. William Andrew Morton announces the engagement of her daughter, Helen Teresa, to... Hello, 
Oliver. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And how was every little thing this morning? Thought I'd bring a few posies to sort of help decorate up the joint. Add a little light. Plate. That looks pretty sporty, I'd say. And that one. Sorry I can't stay and see the boy. But I can do that later. What's the matter, Treasure? I'm afraid Tony isn't going to keep our date. Not going to keep... What are you talking about? What is it? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Treasure. Treasure, let me go to Tony and tell him about the baby. Then I know he'll be sure. And... Oh, no. I'll never let him know now. I don't want him to come back from a sense of duty. Promise me you'll never tell him about the baby. Promise me, Oliver. I promise. Oh, remember, he may come anyhow. He may. Look, honey, I know this isn't the time, but I want you to know that well, I'd, I'd like to look after you and the baby if Tony doesn't come, I mean. You've been a wonderful friend, Oliver. Someday I'd like to be more than a friend. Oh, I know it wouldn't be the same. But I've loved you in my own way for a long time. I know. Well, if Tony doesn't come, may I see you later? Of course. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. He's not come in yet? Well, when do you expect him? Oh, never mind. I'll call later. Proper Oliver? Yes. I've been trying to get Tony Carver all day. But I got a hunch that precious family of his is trying to stall me. Well, can I help? I mean... Uh... No. Yes, you can. You get on that telephone and keep calling until you locate Tony, and then let me know. So what kind of a monkey do the business is this? It's for treasure. If it is for treasure, it's a pleasure. Wait a moment. What's the telephone number? Gramercy 8. Five nine four two. Keep out of this. Young man. And you too. Houston, you better go home and sober up. You and I are going to have a talk, Tony. W what about? About treasure. I'm afraid I'm not interested. Well, you'd better be. For what I have to say may cost me more than you'll ever know. Now, there's one thing I can't tell you. But there's a lot more that I can. I don't want to hear about it. You're going to tell me why you lied to her in those letters. Letters? Well, I didn't write her any letters. I thought so. Now, will you listen? Yes. Well, of course, honey. It's your affair, and I don't blame you for wanting to get away. But what are you going to do when you get to Chicago? Oh, forget things for a while. Well, couldn't you forget just as well in my spare bedroom? All set? Just about. Okay. I'll lug the trunk down to the cab.
You can take the bags down now, Joe. Tony! You, you did remember, didn't you? Yes, Treasure. Well, I'm glad you did, even, even though it isn't quite as we planned, I... I want to congratulate you on your engagement. Oh, it's all a mistake. I'm not engaged, Treasure. But I read about it in the papers, and I... I hope you'll be very happy, just as happy as I am. Are you happy? Oh, of course, very. I was just leaving on a trip, a, a little pleasure trip. I'm not happy. I haven't been since the day I left you. Oh, I have so much to explain, so much to apologize for. We'd better forget. I can't forget, ever. I've heard your voice wherever I went. I've seen your face everywhere I've looked. Oh, I love you, Treasure. I've always loved you. But, Tony, don't you understand? I've changed. We can't just pick up just like that. It's... Oh. <laughs> Treasure. Hey, bags ready to go? What's the matter? Oh, gee. 